Welcome, everybody. This is Table Breakers. We did a little shift to the schedule, uh, just a hair. Uh, originally, we had planned to do my Let's Play, but I needed a little extra time. So uh, I, we apologize for the last minute change. But tonight, we're going to be talking about critical hits and how to make them more entertaining. Uh, joining us tonight, uh, as always, we have Kai Marion. Shadow and Sun, Jade, and of course, last but not least, this Guardia Connell. Uh, Bruce will be joining us here shortly, so uh, we uh, apologize that he isn't here with us right now. But uh, the uh, we are just uh, waiting on him to pop in. He's running a little bit late, so we went ahead and kicked it off, uh, and he'll join us here shortly. So. Uh, Shadow is going to be running the panel tonight, so Shadow, go right ahead. How's it going, folks? Uh, when I saw this topic, I, I, of course, had to go back to my route back in the the mid-late 70s, a little later, technically, um, remembering how it all got started. Back in 1974, as just about everybody knows, Dungeons & Dragons came out in its first edition, the original, you know, digest size book. And a few short la years later, David A. Hargrave um, came up with a, a trio of supplemental books, as well as eventually its own game by the end of the third volume of the Arduin Grimoire. And that's where the critical hits, and as we'll talk about later next week, the fumble chart first came into existence for role-playing games. And I've noticed since I've been you know, gaming since then, Almost every game system I can think of either tried to come up with a system of their own, which was usually the same system of critical hits and fumbles, just sort of tacked onto their own game. And I was wondering, because I don't play every game out there, um, I own a lot of games, but I don't play every game out there. And I'm wondering um, if people understand some of the things that I've come to learn about uh, the pros and cons of critical hits and their inclusion in games from the very beginning or the common practice of tacking on a critical hit system, which almost always mirrors the original Arduin system. Um, I wanted to uh, ask you guys right off the bat, um, what critical hit system do you use? Can you describe what you use or what game version do you use, if any, for critical hits, I, I, I get it that a lot of games really don't lend themselves to a critical hit system um, because of their own built-in mechanics. But maybe there there is a game or a, a version of the critical rules that you like to use, and so that I have somewhere to go from. You know where I know where you guys are. You know standing. Uh, I want to ask each of you, um, what critical hit system do you use, if any, and can you kind of describe how it works? I'm going to start with you, Kai, just go around the clockwise fashion. Well, there's only two games that I really play that have a critical hit system built into it because, of the, well, technically three, if you count exploding dice, which I in many games have that have the just keep on rolling and, you know, roll a 10, keep rolling. Mm -hmm. That's close to a, to a crit that you play with most of the games I play. And the other one is the classic, did you roll a, did you roll a number that was in your critical, uh, critical hit range? And if so, roll to confirm. Did, or if it, or if you go into older versions, oh, you roll a 20, congrats, yay. I mean, that's the basic thing that almost every game copies. And it's, it's either a variation of keep on rolling and keep rolling your dice until, you know, not a 10 and add or whatever six successes or 20 things happen hooray right which is uh what i should have said earlier the original rule for the arduin system was if you roll a 20 you roll percentage on a table and it will tell you like more or less the hit location and the effect of the crit and the additional damage sometimes even uh the fact that the target will die in x number of rounds or it takes, you know, like a limb is chopped off and eyes poked out, stuff like that, um, which, you know, sometimes can be, you know, awesome for the players. 
but the Converse is not so much uh, a big fan favorite, if you know what I mean. You get crit, uh, you, that could literally be it for your character, first combat, first unlucky roll, and you're out of the game already. So, Jade, how about you? Yeah, so, you know, coming from a 3.5 Pathfinder 1E background, uh, the critical hit system was your typical, you know, D20 and then uh, add multiplier or roll damage, multiply damage by multiplier. Um, it worked for the games that was it was made for. Uh, however, with index card RPG, it's it's different. Uh, with index card RPG, when you roll that natural twenty, you roll your base weapon damage and you increase whatever that damage is by the ultimate die, which is a D12. Um, however, I have taken to coming up with homebrewed ideas that I'm wanting to try out uh, at my own table that don't necessarily add to the damage, but add effects to the monster. Can you give us an example? Sure. So um, if I have a, uh, let's see here, um, a barbed sword. Uh, so the sword is, is really of nasty design. It's, it's got barbs sticking out of, you know, it's kind of serrated here and there. And if you critically hit with a barbed weapon or this serrated weapon, you're going to do ripping damage. And that ripping damage, so you'll you'll roll your, your normal damage as, you know, as per normal. Uh, you'll add the D12 as normal. But uh, for the additional effect of it, what it's doing is it's adding wounded. So it leaves gaping, ripping wounds through the enemy. And they take two additional damage every round on their turn. I might tone like back the D12. It's kind of like a bleeding effect, yeah. Um, I might tone back the, the... Or I might actually remove the, the ultimate damage die from the equation because I'm adding a status effect. Uh, for a weapon that might be um, a cursed, so the I'm going to say a, a mace of cursing. You strike with the mace, and when it goes critical on, let's say, a 19 or 20, um, it puts a curse onto the, the the foe instead, and gives them you know makes everything they do hard. Which in index card RPG is a minus three to all rolls. Hmm. That's interesting. How about you, Baron? Well, see, the my, my preferred type of critical system, uh, there, there's two. One, uh, there, there's a beautiful deck of cards out there that uh, Paizo put out, which is the critical hit. So as opposed to doing two times, you draw the card. Sometimes it's a it can be a three or four times crit. Sometimes it can be, you know, uh, you know, you know, the, they lose an arm or something like that. My other one is the Warhammer Fantasy and the uh, also the 40K, which in the book, it gives you, depending on how much damage they've taken uh, on that critical of what things happen. It can be anything from they explode in a beautiful you know pink mist to more gruesome things and descriptions. So, uh, you know, typically the, the cards that like what Jade showed, those are can be used pretty universally, uh, no matter what gaming system that you are playing. Uh, yeah, he's got a, it, it's got all different kinds, whether magic, melee, uh, unarmed, whatever it is. Uh, you know, the, they, they, they can add a lot of flavor to the game, uh, especially if you, another way that I like to do it is if they, if they hit a critical, I'll have them explain, I'll give them, okay, like I'll draw the card, read what a card, and I said, explain how this happened. And then they'll go through and explain, you know, well, I do a jumping kick and, and then come down with my, with the sword and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, the, the, there are a lot of different ways in order to pull in your players in order to give them a feeling that not only did they, did the dice said they did well, but for them to explain how they did it well. 
I, I do like the idea of the deck uh, for, you know, be, because as I saw just now that, you know, it gives, you know, uh, apparently, you know, uh, from spells or different kinds of weapons and things like that. Uh, I, I like that idea because, you know, a, a critical hit from a blowgun dart is way different than a critical hit from a two-handed sword. Getting it open in a browser real quick. Sorry, taking a moment to get it ready. Oh, oh, I think Garrett. Yep, there it is. Yeah, so that's that's some of the different effects that uh, can be done based on the the, the weapon type or the damage type. Mm -hmm. Some of them to brutal effect. I like the one where you lose fingers. Or the other guy loses fingers. So. Uh, Garrett, I think you were muted, sir. Of course there I'm muted. Go. That's how this works. Uh <laughs> But no, uh, and if you look at the magic one, you know, it says magic here. This one is pretty brutal for any spell cast. Oh, yeah. You yeah. Know, the cutoff for magic, normal damage and target cannot cast a spell or use spell-like abilities for 1d4 rounds. You know, yeah, it, it is definitely, you know, stuff that is... That, that kill a party. Yeah, well, it can, you know, or it could kill, kill the... Kill, the bad guy, the the bad guy too. It, oh yeah, it works both ways. Uh, just, that happens to a cleric. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know that, like the piercing shoulder wound. You know they lose some strength and their deck. So if they're sitting right there on the bubble, yeah, you know, they lose one. You know that could take their two hit or or whatever down and their damage down. A little bit too you know it, it, it's the it's that whole thing is is that it it actually gives benefits slash consequences for battling so which which really is one thing that uh that that is great because you know it, it, it's bruce said yeah it, it works both ways and you know, it, and I know Bruce does use these uh, in his, uh, in his, uh, in his game. So yeah, definitely uh, here. So uh, we'll go ahead and move it right along. Go ahead, Shadow. Uh, Connell, same question. Well, the problem is, is I started with 3.5. I moved to Pathfinder. I'm not fifth edition. And Chris, we forgive you. I I make no bones about fifth edition. Here, here's I the don't. thing. It keeps my lights on. Do you? So it pays my bills. So I don't bitch too much. With that being said, fifth edition kind of took a more I've been told old school way at crit. All you gotta do is roll net 20. You don't have to confirm it. It's auto confirmed. I'm not a fan of this. I, I personally am not a fan of this because just because you're rolling net 20, congratulations. No matter what, no matter what you hit. But can how how bad of a hit is this? Is this a flesh wound? You know, it's only a flesh wound, uh, you a wussy, or is it you know dead on the floor? So I will use cards that have been brought up. I have a buddy who uses uh, bicycle, not bicycle, uh, card game, uh, card, like poker cards for it. And the multiplier is from two to nine, no, two to ten. Then the jack, queen, king, he has on the list that do different things. So you nail somebody, and his is high, 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 
uh, stake schemes, you know, the combat could kill you. It depends on how it happens. So hypothetically, you roll neck 20, you confirm it, which is how it should be done. None of this auto confirm bullshit. You have to roll to make sure it, you hit the target. And you pull and you do a 1d10 points of damage. All right, cool. 1d10, I pull a card. It's a 10. So 10 times whatever you roll plus damage. Because sometimes, I don't care who you are, sometimes if you tag that person in, uh, in just the right uh, place with the right weapon, uh, it, he's going to fall over. None of this Hollywood six-year bullshit where you, you got to shoot him like five more times before the bastard should fall down. It is done and over if you pull the right card. And I've seen it happen with a dragon. A guy rolls a D12 and pulls the tin card. So that's, a, uh, that's what, 1,200 uh, uh, damage to the HP? Done and done. Because that's ludicrous. Why? Uh, because th that would be like he like went into flash mode and literally chopped the dragon up into you know my nice one inch cubes to uh, uh, account for Mister sort of Mister who, who thinks Lord of the Rings or the Hobbit is great. Everybody should have the you have the pillage a ring. What did Bar do with his arrow? He killed a now, dragon with a single arrow. But he didn't necessarily do 1,200 points of damage. We what don't did know because Mog doesn't have an HP bar. It can, it can be explained as it went through his heart. The heart has exploded. It, the heart didn't need to have 1,200 points of damage. I think it's just sort of a uh, sort of a, a measuring contest of a certain body part to see how many numbers you can do in actual damage. Kai's been waiting patiently. What you got, bud? Oh, first off, I didn't know we were going to go into super duper detail into all the variations, so I would have given a much a much better answer. But Sorry. anyway, two. You guys took most two, of it. Yeah, shut the fuck up. Um, <laughs> two. Um, when it comes to kill, I. You can always look at the black arrows. You know, being, being you know, the prototype and ancestor for what would become the, you know, the bane. You know, the bane weapons. You know, arrow slaying. The, the arrow slaying or bane weaponry, you know, the idea of, it's like, I'm an awesome dragon. You got hit with the slaying arrow. Guess what? What? You failed to check. Ah, oh, fuck. Oops, you, oopsie doodle. Dead. You don't need to have a complex crit system. You just need to simply go, it's the cool item that says kill you, written all over I mean, it. That, that's the, was it the one in 4,000 or one in 8,000, like, triple nat 20 -ing. like do you remember that rule connell because yeah i know that was a thing at, at several tables that if you nat 20 three times in a row it's just insta kill it's insta gib just done and, and that's basically what that is somebody who's yeah. not here but part of this and if you don't believe us it's part of his youtube uh, sort of video yeah, yeah I, I, I did one in his game uh, a while back uh i rolled three crits in a row as i've seen it happen in bruce's game uh, a couple of times I mean, at the end of the day, the creature falls over when we want the creature to fall over. That's just the power of the DM. If you want to give it 5, 10, how many HP points you want to, that's awesome. But you find a way to make it where, the you know, everybody at the table is doing ah and e's and oohs because you did 1,200 points to that dragon for, with whatever, and you give it an epic death. That's pretty cool, too, in its own right. Yeah, I just think those numbers are are kind of ludicrous um, when compared to, you know, certain physical structures other than just creatures that would, you know, I, I mean, 1,200 points of damage is the equivalent of laying low, you know, some small castles with a sword and a single hit. Well, as it's been pointed out to me multiple times, our shadow, Stop using logic to kill my cat girls. <laughs> I got nothing. Oh, that's been a while. Thank you for bringing back up old memes. Yep, old memes. So, uh, so. I, I got another question uh, of my own because uh, it, it's helping me uh, uh, roll with this. 
because uh, uh, Baron did write up a bunch of questions, and I, I want to get to them uh, ASAP. Two natural 20s means you have to roll a forge save versus damage rolled. Failure means death. Uh, I'm assuming this is Pathfinder. 3.5. Okay. Well, three. So that was a well, massive damage rule in three point five. That if yeah. you uh, if you scored over fifty hit points worth of damage until like level twenty, if you scored fifty hit points of damage, they had to con save versus death in a single right. hit. Um, right. uh, almost impossible original, at low levels. The the original D and D games um, had if if something took more than its full, you know, like more than its maximum hit points in a single attack they had to make the equivalent kind of a roll to see if they just died outright because if you take literally half your hit points uh that could literally be like disintegrating some part of your body that leaves uh, a major artery just pumping and gushing out blood that would just instantly kill you now bruce had brought up a comment earlier um i don't know if you guys can bring it up about um how the players are going to be on the receiving end of criticals more than anything else can you bring that up, Baron? Hold on, I'm got to go back. I don't know Stop how far it is. Stop Bruce and get in here. <laughs> that it, it works both ways. Try telling that to your players who will take the majority of critical hits in your DM career. Exactly. Um, from everything I've learned about critical hits, it seems that uh, for most games, it, it, it's a sure way to literally kill every character that ever walks into your game at first level before they ever make it to second level. Uh, mind you, some of the harder crit rules, like you guys described, we're having to back up the crit with another crit. You know, uh, that, that, that definitely makes the odds uh, better in favor of everybody. Uh, the Connell version, that is literally the original Arduin version. You roll a 20, it's a crit, but, you know, that we'll find out what happens from there, which I don't like. Because sometimes some people technically can't actually hit with a crit. Just because you rolled a 20, that's suddenly like a magical, you know, thing that, that even though you might have needed, needed a, a 27 to hit, because you rolled a 20, you hit. Go ahead, Kai. Okay, since we are going into now into variations and how – because I didn't know we were going to go into variations on how to improve crit rules – I thought we were just going over the basic bitch, uh, I am bitch rules that we were going to use. So I guess what I'm going to expand upon here is, is perhaps you should look at the three point, the three point X epic, you know, epic level handbook where they actually give you the idea that critting is not an automatic hit, twenties is not an automatic crit. It is mm -hmm. instead, it is instead a you get a plus ten to your roll past twenty, and if you roll a one, it's a minus a minus ten rather than an automatic failure. So that way, your gobble motherfuckers out there who are like, "Ha, I roll a 20, and therefore, you know, God, I uh, God gets mobbed by four hundred peasants, and they roll enough twenties. No, you add just a plus ten to their modifier, and does it does it hit the actual um, new epic level uh, epic levels of, of AC? No. Well, then guess what? You didn't hit, uh, or hey. He, this pe I'm level 20. This peasant's level 2. I swing. I rolled a 1. I still hit him. Why? Because his AC is literally 12. I need to roll a negative 14 to hit. Um, and anything better than negative 14, I hit. Well, you rolled a 1. Still a plus 4. I still hit the motherfucker. And you win. Mm -hmm. And be But because of the you fact can. that we... Uh, and, but that was the wonderful fun of epic, you know of our epic level handbooking, but everyone forgets that book exists. I don't own a single Pathfinder or... No, this is 3.x. This is 3.x. Or, 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 or anything past second edition right. when it comes I know, to but, Dungeons and Dragons. But most people who play I, who play 3.x, a.k.a. Path, <laughs> and 3, 3, 5, Pathfinder 1, is literally all 3.x. So... It was literally an, a, a, an optional rule that you could you, you could roll with. So therefore, if you don't, and the thing is, I've been using that one for a very very long time because of the fact that nobody likes auto hits, nobody likes auto fails. So therefore, by removing the auto hit, so it's just a, so it's a twenty plus ten. Congratulations! It's not did you did you hit? Mm, yes or no? Because most people are going to hit. I, if you give, give somebody a free plus ten to your to your check, guess what? You're probably going to hit everybody on the under the sun, but you know, if you get a demigod out there who walks in and goes, 
ha, my name is Gilgamesh. I'm a, I'm I am completely cocky as I cocky as fuck. I rolled a peasant. Did, it, did I allow you to hit me? No, but I rolled a twenty. Still better than you. Um, yeah, I, that's just I, that's just a simple variation, and I really and I really liked that rule that was put out. Nobody uh, nobody seems to follow it. Nobody seems to know it, but. At least at my tables, it's worked. It's worked wonders because it took away the ability to hire four hundred. Um, I, I I go buy five hundred tap ferrets and then I take down God because of action economy, and I roll more twenties than you. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, that that, that I, I like it. Um, but it doesn't. Um. It isn't the uh, the system I, I'm seeing in most of my experiences lately. It's it's something a little bit different. Jay's been waiting oh, no. patiently. What you got? And welcome to the show, Bruce. I'm sorry for being late, but we had delays. I'm sorry, sirs. No, sorry, sorry. Like that. I love you guys. I'm sorry that I'm late. The, the- the, the reason why you're, you're not familiar with that shadow is because it came from the Epic Level Handbook, which was actually a 3.0 book published uh, around the same time as 3.5 was really getting going. Um, and while I, I have read that rule, uh, we didn't, um, the, the play group I had uh, in the St. Louis region didn't have that book available to them. So we didn't know that that rule existed Um until it was far too late to turn back from a scenario. And that scenario was um, we had a bard in our party who had taken the leadership feat. And their charisma was such that they had something like uh, 200 followers. Um, and what what the, the player did is like, well, we're on a dragon hunt. So I'm going to arm. I'm going to go buy 200, you know, standard long swords. I'm going to hand them to, you know, my my followers, my groupies. Well, and I'm going to tell them to go the attack that dragon. Um, you know, so 200 attack rolls later, you know, some of them, yeah, you know, a lot of them were crits. You know, yeah, sure, the, a lot of groupies died, but the the attacks <laughs> still went through until, as Kai pointed out in the Epic Level Handbook, that it, you know, just because you roll a nat 20 doesn't mean it's auto hit. Mm-hmm. So I, I I know the exact scenario, Kai, because I I also went through that. There are many, I, many games out there where a 1 and a 20 are just automatic success and, and failures out there. I mean, a lot of them. And, those, I, and that's the, This is why I'm getting rid of the D20 for my upcoming game. Well, even even in percentile games, Bruce, I've seen the, the 05, 90, you know, 95 to 100, the same thing. Uh, Kai? I'm about to say the exact same thing. Like, no matter what – I. D20 or, or percentile, you're still looking at 5% in, uh, increments, and, that, and you might as well just re- I do some good old-fashioned fractional redu- I reduce a reproduction here, and, you can, I, and you're back down to it's D20 or D100. It's you, 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 I, I, I'm totally in agreement. Um, games like uh, Palladium, they have a rule that um, your skill might be 172%, but if you roll... Uh, I, I think it's a uh, 97 or above. You still fail. And I'm like, do it's you not so understand trash. how math? I know that's not how math works. If you're going to do that, then you should just say, well, you can never get pluses above X because I'm just going to take them away from you. Why even yeah. bother, right? See, that's kind of going back to like second edition, uh, second edition D and D when uh, AD and D, where we had the exact same situation, and we would step where you could literally have one of those okay so you get a minus 50% uh, i a minus 50% due to the fact that it's broad daylight there's no shadows okay i'm still at a 122 so so and if people looking at you says a minus a, 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 another minus uh, 35 fantastic okay i only have an 85% chance of stealthing and we're like oh my god it's broad daylight at noon and he's a feet on a blade of grass he is stealth mm-hmm. mother yep yep, yep. Uh, that's why I, I actually, when it comes to percentile games, I have a, a simple system of negative modifiers. If it's like uh, difficult or whatever, it might be actually 50%. But if I deem the the task impossible, you get a minus 100. If you can still make it, I'll let you roll. But you're getting yeah. a minus 100 because I think it's impossible. That's I, how I math works, right, out. guys? Go ahead. Nothing should be that, that was it. 
I, I was just going to say, like, for my system, I'm not going to make 100 or 95 plus on a D100 to be an automatic, hey, you might have got a critical. No, I'm not. Um, however, if you roll max damage on your die, we have trauma damage. And so if you roll Thank an you. 8 on the D8, the you roll another D8, and you'd minus 1 for that result. And if you roll max damage on that die, you roll that again, and you keep adding until you stop rolling max damage. So See, the critical hits are not really going to be a thing with the new system, but you are going to have, like, some hits are going to hurt worse than others, just kind of out of the ordinary. And I think that will work out a lot better, even though a lot of people are like, oh, my God, a magic missile will fucking kill you. Probably will. I don't give a shit. This new system, it, your, your base hit points are your constitution, starting off. Your constitution, equal that, okay, throw that in your hit point box. Then you roll your, your D10 if you're a fighter. You roll that plus your con bonus for your first level hit points. So you're going to have between like maybe 13 if you roll one and you have shitty constitution and like maybe 25, 26 hit points. So you should be able to take a hit or two. I want people that, to that's be able interesting to destroy you brought anything. that up, Bruce. I, I've always thought that a critical should be more reliant on the damage that you roll. Like if you rolled, like you said, the D8 and you roll an 8, to me that would indicate that you did something like a critical as opposed to just the fact, okay, I've connected with my die roll. Why does that make it a crit versus the damage that I rolled making it a critical? Does anybody follow? Yeah. Now, um, the thing it, is it, that just, if, and if you roll a D100 <laughs> and you show, you show up to the, the roll with like, hey, I rolled a triple zero, okay? And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. You rolled a triple zero. Um, if you roll a triple zero, throw an extra damage value die out there. So if you're just rolling, a, if you're just an expert, I don't know, a lowly expert, and you're rolling two die eight plus, say you have a plus five strength modifier. So instead of like, Okay, well, what's that mean? Damage from a modifier. Dot damage value. Okay, roll me an extra two die eight. Add your five in there. So you're rolling four die eight plus five for your hit. If you're if you're hitting with that, that's great. And by the way, if you roll a ot one botch, I haven't figured out a rule for that yet. Because the majority of times in in the games we play, there are more people that suffer critical hits. And the players suffer critical fumbles far more than the NPCs ever will. And so I don't want to really have a game where, hey, guys, you're kind of trained at swordsmanship. You're kind of young kids on a car vanguard job. But like the first combat, uh, two of the guys rolled natural ones. And so one decapitated himself because he only had 13 hit points to start as a first level fighter. And the other one, uh, he uh, hurt his hand. And then the goblins pretty much carried him off and the party could hear them getting uh, hear, hear him getting butt fucked all night and i thought no i don't want to have critical fumbles happen with such severity in the game like what it had with 3x and pathfinder i really don't i want the game to be mostly fun yeah you rolled you rolled that one all right well the dm should be able to throw a ruling out there imagine that throw a ruling out there guys of what happens Make it to where it's at least a minor pain, like you throw your sword six feet away from you. Next round, you got to go over there, bend over, grab your sword. And that'll take you four segments or five segments, five seconds. And they're like, well, fuck. Well, I'm giving you that. It could be you self-inflict yourself with your, you know, you put your side through your testicle sack. No, just make a ruling. Or, or, or like that guy who got negative. What? Or like that guy who got hit by a car the other day while trying to shoot somebody and ended up shooting himself in the head. And and the thing is, that's, is that, that's on camera. Yeah, I, I I think I saw that. I need to I need you to send me the link for that because I think I saw that. I now I, I liked it. Now the critical hit system, Flady might be knowing what I'm talking about, but if you guys remember in my game, whatever you roll on your die, whenever you reverse the numbers, that is your location. And I just threw a ten out there for intents and purposes so that would be a miss in most cases but if that is a hit if that's a legitimate hit 
then that location that was just rolled is a zero one. A zero one's a headshot. And therefore, every die roll on the D100 can be tr given to a location. And I borrowed that. <laughs> I know that, right, guys? Borrowing. Imagine that borrowing from games. Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay has the best hit and critical hit system because every throw of the die gives you a location for every hit. And that's one of the joys of the first and second ed Hogshead Publishing and GW FRP. And that's something I, I want to bring back. And I think that is something that could be brought back to any table if you have the conventions available immediately to use it. It's just an elegant system. But um, I, I think I think the damage dice being able to explode instead of doing critical hits, I think that's a better way to do damage. And I know this sounds kind of punishing, but wait, Bruce, you said for damage. Yes. So if your cleric, say Ronaldo, the cleric comes out there and he throws his uh, cure moderate wounds out and he manages to roll an eight and a three on that. Well, grab yourself another D eight or just remember I he rolled an eight before and the trauma dice. Oh shit. Another eight. So that's 15 points. All right. 16 points plus three, another 19 points of healing. So therefore a simple second level spell might be able to cure somebody up all the way from a nasty wound in their thigh and make it to where they can at least travel tomorrow. The exploding die mechanic, I think, works a lot better than critical hit systems because I've been playing with critical hit systems for over 30 years. And for me, they work if you're doing cinematic play, but really what they do is let's find a new way to hurt your players at the table. That's the perfect segue into my next question. And I would love to let you go first, Bruce, but um, I'm going to actually start with Connell. Okay. Okay, guys, how do you or do you mitigate the harshness of the probability rules that rules like these uh, for crits, that is, uh, work more in the favor of large monster groups than in favor of the PCs? And, and if your system doesn't, you know, involve that, I, I you know, didn't I'm, account for that when I wrote the question. I so I'm going to start with you, Tom. So the question is, does the crit so basically what, what what do you do? Okay, you've got uh, your party of let's say six players, but uh, you decide to ambush them with twenty goblins. Well, those twenty goblins get to attack once around, let's say, versus the players eight. It's first level game, um, and you start just like uh, you, you drop your twenty dice on the table, and there's six crits right there. Well, first let's let's correct the math, and this is not a jab at you. Let's correct the math for. At least for fifth edition. 20 goblins against six players would kill them hands down. There's no questions asked. There's the goblins would just rock the players. There's just no way around that because of the mechanics of the game. So I was well, actually I was actually in a game with uh, a different game recently um, where we fought 30 kobolds and uh, we were like fifth level and yeah, they almost they almost tore us a new one. Okay. I mean, I'm not trying to be a dick. I'm just trying to fix the math. Um, well, the, the uh, 20 whatever. Uh, right, right. 20 no, well, let's go. Would be let's a, go. A, right, right, right. Let's go with that. Let's, you know, you got higher number of bad guys versus good guys. Um, mm -hmm. What you roll is what they roll. If I roll, if I have five goblos, 15 orakai or whatever, they roll. If they roll nat 20s, they roll nat 20s. And they if they confirm, they confirm. If the players roll net 20s and they confirm, they confirm. What's good for the goose is good for the gander. There is no – and this is when I'm playing with uh, playing at a table with grown-ups. There's no hand-holding. There is the dice di – the dice got rolled, and here, here, here is, you know, how, how it breaks down. Um, but, you know, just because I'm rolling 20 D20s doesn't mean – more than four of them are going to be a, are going to be a crit. Yes, the numbers are. You can roll higher. zero. You can roll zero, or or yeah, obviously you can roll zero or even twenty. It's not right. going to happen. But right, you know, I, I could even be... if it's one, even if it's one every combat, uh, you're you you might not make it through the night with any players left alive. Um, I trust the players know how to make their character, especially if I'm g gaming for a bunch of grown ups. That if their character dies, I don't have 
uh, dice being flown across the room or <laughs> any kind of uh, grown, grown ups being yeah, grown ups. Just... Um, and just because you're having a hot night doesn't mean I can't uh, channel my inner jade and roll shit the entire game. Mm -hmm. Or I'm using the internet for like roll 20 or whatever, where it's the internet saying random rolls and seven people roll the same roll back to back. Yeah, mm -hmm. random my ass. So the dice don't lie and whatever the dice do roll, it is what it is. I don't pull punches and I don't play favorites. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. Just uh, uh, something I, I was curious about. Kids, I, I kind of, with kids, like new players, like kids, I, I, I don't necessarily always play by those rules. But when I'm playing at an adult table, I do. Because I want those kids to keep coming back. Because if those kids keep coming back, they get they get a new addiction to a hobby. A hobby that will keep them off the street doing drugs. They won't have the money. Dr. Feelgood's at the table behind the DM screen. Come get yeah, your fix. That'll make it awkward. It's not like, never mind. Boy, am I shutting up. Next person, please. <laughs> that would be Baron. My... That would be Baron. We're going to go in reverse order. What was the question one more time? I'm sorry. No, no worries. Uh, how do you or do you mitigate uh, basically the odds that uh, monsters are going to be rolling way more crits than the players? And with certain crit rules, that could literally mean that no one's ever going to survive to make it to second level if you do a lot of combat. Well, the, it, when, when I'm a DM, for whatever reason, I tend to roll like crap. Okay. Whereas I'm the reverse, I'm the I'm the I'm usually the reverse of what everyone else is. Everyone's like, "Oh man, I'm the DM. My guys are hot all night long. I'm just you know cutting through the players and swans. I'm lucky if I can roll above a four. Come on, just roll above a four. Damn it." Um, but no, uh, <laughs> I've seen the, that too. Yeah, uh, the, yeah, and, and if, if for some reason my dice are hot, I, I play the dice as they are. You know, I, I tend to roll out in the open because that's what I prefer. You know, I, if, if the, if the mathematics comes out and the random, you know, random generator of the dice say, I'm sorry. I can't do that, Dave. Then, well, can't hit. Or, oh, look, Hal doesn't like you today. I'm sorry. Opens the airlock. You know, it, it, it's kind of one of those things with 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 the way that that, that I do it. it. It's I tend to roll everything out in the open because I want them to, you know, all the players have to roll out in the open. You know, it's it's that whole trust thing. You know. Uh, the so I mean if if you know they 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 get piled on and let's say four out of the five hit crits four out of the five hit crits it's just you know it it, it, it it's the uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a, a uh, uh, old adage from a, a movie may the odds be ever in your favor. Uh, so that that's where that rolls down to. So, all right. How about you, Jade? So, if my players are facing, let's say, I don't know, twenty skirids. Uh, for those of you who know what a skirid is, you can go ahead and shudder now. Um, and you know, sure. If I roll a bunch of nat twenties, well. You know, as Baron said, they're out in the open. Now, I didn't used to roll my dice in the open. I used to be one of those game masters who had all my notes and all my stuff behind a game master screen. Um, because, you know, what I was doing was supposed to be separate from what the players were doing. I realized, uh, mostly after the switch to Index Card RPG, but I'd started realizing before that rolling out in the open was fair for everyone. And I wanted my players to be able to, you know, not you know, roll and then suddenly pick up the die 
and and be like, oh, well, that was a, that was a seventeen, or oh, that was that that was an eighteen. No, the, once the die rolls, the die until the die stops, you are not to touch it, and even after it stops, you leave it there until you know you declare what you know the the final numbers. Um, and I am like, you know, if I'm going to hold my players to that standard, I'm going to hold myself to that standard. So. If my players are set upon by 20 whatevers and they're level, you know, whatever, and I get like six, seven crits, well, that dumbs the brakes. Like, you know, the life sometimes isn't fair. So the this on the same flip side, though, if my players are rolling hot all night, like I've had some nights where my players rolled uh, between all like five players, my players rolled, I think five or five to 10. I want to say, I I should probably five to eight, uh, critical hits, all nat twenties in a single hour of combat. Um, because the, the combats we, we were at like level 20 something and the combats were lasting pretty long, but yeah, I had like five to eight different nat twenties hit the table during that time. And, you know, them's the breaks like if, if my players are rolling hot you know the the enemies go down faster if my you know if my players aren't rolling hot but my enemies are well that i'm gonna be probably uh handing out brand new shiny character sheets that all have no uh any you know no information at all written on them sounds very reasonable okay and bruce I'm going to ask you to repeat the question because I have some thoughts about some of the other comments, but I want to answer your question first. Okay. How do you or do you mitigate the harshness of the probabilities that the uh, rules will work more in the favor of large groups of monsters than in favor of the PCs? Um, I tell people before they sit down, more than likely, Critical hits are going to happen to you more than their more than your foes. Uh, even if you have like a thirty nine armor class in my game, and you've got for in my Pathfinder game I run, if I if you've got a thirty nine AC and most of my bad guys only have a plus fifteen to hit, um, there's going to be that one jackass that rolls in that twenty. And if I've been rolling really poorly that night, just expect karma to know what your address is, and you it's probably going to happen to you. You're going to suffer a critical hit. You know the the impossible shot, the one the one shot that killed Goliath from David Slingstone, that could happen to you very easily. And just mm-hmm. kind of explain that to them and and give them give them that information. You know that I say that at cons too. I, I tell that to people whenever I run a game at a game store. You know, I mean, yeah, that's great. I I've got a critical hit deck here. So and you're using a rapier or a kukri. Oh, that's awesome. So you know the rules for the the game system we're running. That's great. But it's been my been my experience that while you might have the odds in your favor the players are typically more more or less going to suffer much more damage than the npcs ever will and and the the main main reason is that the npc is there to be a a hindrance or an object or like a, a speed bump and you're supposed to plow through and suffer whatever incidental damage it is and continue forth and if you if you can handle that that's great sit down let's play but i don't like people that sit at my table that are like i have a 43 ac how is he hitting me well typically rolling in the open fixes that you can't really contest a die that pops up a natural 20 if it's sitting between eight people at a table mm-hmm. all of us see it all of us see it you know and it looks really suspicious whenever somebody grabs their dice off their keyboard it was a natural 20 sure capron you know that happens a lot at you know other tables which we don't want to be at but you know most of the people i know they want to roll in the open because they want to match your energy they want to match your ability to be like i'm being honest here's what here's what got rolled if you want to see my note card for what his uh, thaco and for for what his base stack bonus is if you want to see his saves here it is because i copied that out of the book or i, I made this out of the, the character creator but these are all piezo appropriate and most players, when they see that, they're like, okay, cool. That, that's fine. That's fine. Nobody really gets, you know, I can't believe he hit me. Well, I rolled two natural 20s in the middle of the fucking table. What more do you need? Mm-hmm. 
you know, and that happens quite a bit. I mean, I've seen Connell do it. I've seen myself do it. It just, it just happens. And it's so not, learn to accept it. It's not that I, 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 it's the believing of or not believing. How did you hit my character? I'm like, yeah, he hit my character. This is what I tell myself every time. I'm like, yeah, this is going to suck. Not how does it, not how did he hit me? It's like, okay, how bad, what, what, how many teeth am I going to be missing? Yeah, and that's a realistic outlook for whenever you get into a fight, you expect to be at hurt at the end of it, right? Yeah. I don't know anybody that goes into a boxing match that's like, I'm not going to get touched. I'm untouchable. No, 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 dude. dude. You're, you're getting yeah. ready to do, do pugilism work. You, you expect to put yourself through a little bit of punishment there, and you expect to not be as fresh feeling when you step out as when you stepped in. And that's, that's the difference, you know, I mean, between us sitting at a table – because in our regular life, we're drivers or accountants or, you know, we're stay-at-home dads. Most of us don't have professional adventurer on our resume. We're like, yeah, well, we chased after this guy with the receiver paperwork and we were trying to hand it to him so they could process him. And, you know, he knew he had to show up at court like three days later. And instead, like, hey, we you've been down the side of a mountain. We end up sliding down the side of a mountain and, like, you know, scraping ourselves on 700 feet of jagged rock. And uh, I left about three pints of blood up on the hillside. You know, most players don't have the mindset where that can happen. Now, occasionally you'll get some guys that have done stuff or seen things. But more than likely, most of us have led very boring lives. And we get our excitement from books, movies, or games like this. I swear you were channeling one of my previous adventures. I thought about doing that as a career. Go hunt people down to give them a, by the way, the good judge wants to see you on Monday. Think again. Think again. <laughs> you, you don't, you don't want, as much as that might be lucrative, there's going to be one yeah, guy. It's not. There, it's not. They, down here, they only pay you $89 per server that you process through. So, so, I mean, as much as it might be something that could save you from, like, a, a, a nagging electricity bill, um, it, it's better off just to let the, somebody else in the system that wants to endure hit point loss and, and bruising and possible stitches, let them do that, you know? <laughs> it was 25 bucks back in the day, Bruce, $25. And people get upset, like, they... They will crack their door open and they will poke the barrel of their gun or pistol out and like thinking you're going to be brave. Like, I'm going to stop all the bullets for $79. No, no, don't do no. that. Don't do that. Okay, Kai, same question. Do you need me to repeat it as well? Kai, you're muted. Uh, you're muted. Yes, uh, please. Can you, can you please use that in the form of a sentence? <laughs> um. <laughs> it, it, it will be in the form of a sentence such as it is okay Kai how do you or do you mitigate the harshness of the probability that the rules will work more in favor of large monster groups than in favor of the PCs I actually adopted something that my kids introduced I let them run for a bit and then I went wait a minute you because they saw the exact same problem we're all seeing about, hey, y'all going to die here? And then they went, no. <laughs> so, they, so their rule, I their rule, which actually turned out to be pretty fun, was simply crits. I, I crits just inflict a one-round status effect. No bonus damage, no weird as effects, no something strange. Just simply, you may describe how the crit happens, and then give a stash of, like, dazed, confused, um, ho hobbled, you know, just an effect on a crit. And suddenly it turned from playing rocket tag, massive damage, monster is everyone dies horribly, to, okay, cool, you blinded some guy for a round with, uh, with that magic missile bolt, or, ah, you... You gave him a, a dislocated shoulder for a round, and they go, "Ah, oh, mother bitch, that hurt!" And you know, it's one of those. I and honestly, it suddenly turned combat when I'm like, "Okay, kids, that's actually a pretty good rule." 
and we've been running that one for about a year now and um yeah it all i introduced to him was here here's my here's my um warhammer fantasy battles critical i i location die to go tell you where you got i where you beat them senseless at so that way you can help tailor the crit to where and it's just turned much more um cinema i i don't want to say cinematic but much more um narrative focused rather than just simply well my i'm a crit focused specialized this is my cool multi, times five multiplier doom weapon and um i have looked like no this is actually a really fun easy system and uh 20s are just cool the, the, there's no weird cards there's no massive multi damage multipliers there's no exploding dice it's just simply um yeah you just have, you banged his shin really hard and he can't chase you this round or you you tripped him and it's not really a full trip but it's you, you made him stumble about or you pushed him about and it made everybody go wait what what can i do with it and it became much more um entertaining I, it was a nice change of pace where when the option was murder faster or make the combat more fun the they chose more fun and That's i was awesome. shocked and i ran with that and i've been enjoying that one far more than i'm enjoying a lot of other things so yeah i i, I think uh, all of us can can appreciate uh at least some aspect of what you just described um speaking of the de description um i'm gonna go to the next one I'm gonna hit you up first bruce and continue uh clockwise fashion uh, Jade, Baron, Connell, and Kai. Um, and this one, this one actually came from Bruce. Uh, I mean, sorry, Bruce. Baron. Uh, he wrote this question uh, for the topic earlier. Um, what are some ways to make critical hits feel more impactful and, exci and exciting in tabletop RPGs? And how can the game master and players use these moments to heighten tension and create memorable experiences for the players? Well, I mean, whenever you tell somebody, like, okay, you just saw the dice I rolled, right? Okay, the tally mm -hmm. for that is 47 points of damage. Also, because you are, you took hypochondriac as one of your character's weaknesses, one of your hindrances, you are bleeding out one hit point every five seconds, no matter what. Um, we have a ticking clock above your head right now. You're going to die in about a minute because you had only like 10 hit points left. And being that you're a bleeder, you, you, you might want to be calling on your, your medic whenever you can. Things like that. I know that's kind of specific, but you want to tell people like, you see your henchman get hit by the giant's boulder. It not only hits your henchman, but also flattens your party's cart. All oh, of your yeah. stuff is now on the ground. Not the cart. Not the cart, right? Not the cart. And then you tell people, like, one of the other giants has clubbed your big, beefy fighter, Carla the Insane. And now she's laying with her helmet rolling down the side of the mountain with a large dent in it. Her face looks like she just got nailed by a uh, 95, mile, 95 mile per hour fastball sent back out into right field, and the, the outfielder took it in the skull. That's what her face looks like. Um, she doesn't have long. Just, just something simple like that. You could summarize it with, they don't have long. Four words. That's all you have to say. And that should put a fire under your party to where they can get over there, bandage them up, healer, medic, priest, whatever, paladin, lay on hands, I don't give a shit. Somebody get over here and fix our co-worker or our, our, our companion. Somebody get over here and make sure that they do not fall apart. And it sounds like, you know, that's like something that could happen in any battle. And it should. That could almost happen in, in any battle you the dungeon master have the ability to arbitrate as to whether that does or not and i would recommend that you use that more often than not because 
a lot of times you'll have the party get besieged by bandits and sometimes the within three rounds or within 20 seconds the party is able to get their crossbows leveled at the bad guys and put two of them in the dead book and those five bandits are now down to three so they will instead do something like they'll shoot the horse or they'll shoot like your large fleshy magician that's sitting on top of his uh light pony and uh, your your magician now has a, a an arrow that went through his chest and took out like 17 points of damage the magician is probably you know going to be more important than chasing down those three outriders and uh, putting them to the sword you can do that later they, you can use that as justification for later but now you have to you know fix your friend as the bad guys ride off and uh they're they're really happy with what they did because they're still alive their two companions are dead but you've got something more important your spellcaster your friend you've known since age eight you need to fix him up what are you doing and then start out going around the table asking them that and just just break initiative don't even let initiative be a thing just let the players figure out what they're doing and notate in your head how long it's taking them to get a solution to the medical emergency and if they can get it done within a timely fashion they might be able to save your friend's life if not they're going to make it to where all he can all they can do is apply enough pressure to where he probably will go unconscious for maybe a day or two and still is going to require intensive care and somebody campsite you know trying to feed him soup and trying to make sure you know he's comfortable trying to bandage him up trying to change the bandages not let not let the the native wildlife get a hold of him and tear him apart you know well we we are we see there's like 40 coyotes out here maybe if we feed him mages his body and uh they'll just go away throw, throw it out there 70 feet and see what happens don't don't do that don't let your party do that let your party get used to their characters make it to where their characters need each other and they need to be more engaged with one another and and understand that that's all you've got that's the only people that are that have got your back these other crazy people that are on this trip with you and if you let them die from massive damage or trauma you've really done them a, dirt, a disservice i like that teamwork i guess how about you jade okay so ways that i make critical hits more impactful or exciting i touched on it a little bit earlier um you know having moved away from um pathfinder 1e and and D 3.5 like yes i i have the critical hit deck i also have the critical fumble deck but that's you know next week's topic um so that was that was the first foray into making critical hits more interesting was the critical hit deck Having all of these different unique abilities based on, or unique, you know, outcomes based on what kind of weapon was being used. Um, I took it a step further uh, when I made the the plunge to index card RPG. You know, because, you know, I explained the system earlier, but, you know, the, the concept of when you get a critical hit, when you score that nat 20 or, or whatever the case might be, you know, I, I don't think more damage is necessary. Um, you know, yeah, sure. You know, the more damage is, you know, is probably the, the player's pre- preference, so they end the combat faster. Um, I would say that instead of maybe, you know, and this, this is me being a theoretical game master and armchair GM right now, but maybe instead of doing additional damage, have a minimum damage. Like, it can't be below, like, X number. Like whatever you roll, you know, you, it, it, you know, if you get like a four on the damage, you know, it, it can't get less than five because you're rolling a D10, whatever the case might be. But I, I mostly prefer to add different status effects instead of additional damage. Um, so like, you know, somebody, uh, you know, critically hits uh, a monster and they they aim for the the legs to you know take the legs out from them, leg them and leave them. Um, so I'm like, okay, so you're you're trying to actively slow them down. Well, okay, you critically hit. They are now slowed. They can only take a single move action up to close distance. They can't move far. They can't move you know near except for like taking their entire turn to move that distance. So you've slowed them down. 
um, or hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I've got this javelin. Um, you know, I'm going to launch it at the enemy's chest. Um, you know, from across the map, and you know, rolls that at twenty. You know, it went from being oh well, you, your odds are really slim to oh well, you got the nat twenty. Let's see what happens. So you launch it across the map, and it it, it lands home. It, it lands directly into the chest. Awesome. Um, you know, now now there's now they're a a fountain of red water. Uh, let's say. Um, you know, they're just spewing, you know, blood everywhere. So they themselves are are going to be um, exhausted or beleaguered. They they can't actively move well because they are just, you know, they, they've got a, a, you know, presumably a five foot shaft sticking out of their chest, uh, you know, that that would probably be pretty hard to move around with. Uh, so they're going to be taking negatives to all their, you know, abilities, all their checks, all their, you know, even magic. Um, and, you know, they're also spraying blood everywhere. So, you know, the the area in their immediate vicinity is going to be difficult terrain. You know, moving through there, you have the you run the risk of slipping and, and busting your ass, you know. And if they're surrounded by their guards, well, now their guards are are taking penalties, too, because that one player just, you know, launched a javelin, took a chance and, and you know, landed home directly into the heart of the enemy that they were facing. Um, so I prefer status effects that affect the environment as well as the the the, be, the being that has been targeted by the critical hit um, far more than I, I want damage. Like I don't, you know, running index card PG, the 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 bloat is not there um, because, you know, everything is limited to heart values and all the players are limited 10 hit points at the beginning. Uh, you know, they can gain more. It's difficult. It, it takes time and effort to do. But even the monsters, like some monsters might have up to three or four hearts, but they're typically considered the boss monster. And you're not going to run into one of those every scene. You're going to run into those maybe once every few scenes or once every few sessions, depending. Um, so I, I much prefer the concept of, again, doing status effects and environmental effects. I, I like that um, part about uh, the minimum damage. There was nothing worse in the old days than rolling a crit and then rolling a one on your damage. Um, it just means like, why did we bother? You know, uh, right. you know, as in rolling up the crit because it really had like no effect. Right. And so, uh, you know, for, for me, I, I would say minimum damage should be at least one third to one half of the weapon's capability. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That makes so much more sense. Uh, otherwise, it, you know, how is it a crit? I mean, if you literally rolled the mm -hmm. one, you know, um, it, it might literally be, you know, better to have rolled more damage without the critical. How about you, Baron? Uh, can I get the question one more time, please? Because <laughs> uh, you because you didn't write it or anything. Um, what yeah. are some ways to make critical hits feel more impactful and exciting in tabletop role playing games? And how can game masters and players use these moments to heighten tension and create memorable experiences for the players? Well, first off, I'll say uh, welcome, Binks Raiders. Definitely appreciate you guys being here. Uh, now, to, for the question, uh, you know, it. I think I kind of answered that earlier on, where you, you can make it more impactful by having the actual players who, who roll those pits telling you how they happened. Uh, you know, by by discussing how how they position themselves, how the you know they. They swung the mighty axe and it came down crashing across, you know, the chest of the enemy and, and you know, did all, you know, did the, did the damage that it did. You know, things along those lines, it, it makes it feel like they're more in tune with the actual what's going on within the game. So that, that I think is one way to make it more impactful. Uh, definitely making sure to uh, 
you know, have some way of, you know, if they do the crit, you know, crits are, are you know, not, you know, little things that happen. You know, crits are something that's going to either cripple or help to in incapacitate the enemy. So things that happen along those lines need to reflect that. That that's what I'm gonna go again once back to the cards. Those cards are very, very good way of adding some flavor, adding some consequence, whether it be for the player or for the 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 bad bad guy or whoever they're fighting, to you know, things are happening pretty good. Uh you know, it it's the it's, it, it is that, that that pretty much is what I use, and a lot of a lot of folks at my table really enjoy that because it gives them the opportunity to express how their character would actually, uh, you know, approach and how it would happen with the with the crit happening. And you know if and if they're they get the more invested they are, the more they're going to be into the game. So and with them being able to explain how their character is making that impact with that critical, then that that is is going to be, you know, the way to to have them uh, more immersed within the game. So basically, have them describe the crit, and and, and draw them into the, the the moment. Exactly. Yeah, I, I like that. Um, when I was playing, one of the first games I played online, uh, when I started meeting you guys, was with uh, Crafty Matt Craft, uh, and we were playing uh, Conan Two D Twenty, and uh, there was a moment where I I literally uh, killed the big bad um, boss monster of the game. And he drew me in by doing that, saying, "Tell me, tell me how you, you know, how'd you finish him off?" And I, I really liked that. I'd never really actually done anything like that. I usually, uh, as the GM, would just tell the players what happened. But I like the idea of drawing the players in and, and and letting them decide, you know, how did you finish him off, or or what did you do to, you know, it's your story. What did you do? Show me. So uh, how about you, Connell? You are muted. You're muted. I should have said uh, you're muted before I said anything, but uh oh. I would like to treat I, I prefer to treat each crit as they stand, how they happen. Uh basically not pony uh backing what uh Baron said. I mean there was a uh Playing Wrath of the Righteous with uh, uh, Jade as a DM, we we're fighting. I don't think it was a regular dragon. I think it was some other kind of dragon. I don't think it's one of the regular ones. You're muted. Go <laughs> figure. You know, par for the course here. Um, right. No, th that was an umbral dragon. I pulled. Uh, you know, I'm an archer. Go figure, right? I, I'm an archer, and I pulled the bar uh, from. You know. Uh, the Hobbit, and I shot. I, I got not. I got not twenty. He pulled a card, and it was bleed damage. Congratulations, you tagged the dragon. The dragon, by the time it flies back, it, it's dead. It's just de you know bleed damage alone will kill it. So, you telling a player that you not telling a player that you basically one shot a, a um, dragon, but telling the player how and by describing how it happened with that will will drag the players into it, or as Baron said, having them explain, okay, you rolled a nat 20 and you confirm, congratulations. Uh, you, you, you use this kind of weapon, right? Yes. How do you kill? How do you maim? How do you whatever your opponent? It depends on the smart ass. You know, it's a bard. I, I, I cut off his fingers. Uh, or whatever, depending on, because just because it's a lethal hit, as a DM, doesn't mean you have to make it a lethal hit. Sometimes, if you're fighting against a bar, you know, taking away his hands, or uh, yeah, I know, weird for me to say. 
uh, is just as it will draw the players in. I mean, you get a hold of a bard, you guys are fighting, you stab him in the dick with your rapier. He is now a eunuch. But all also, his bardic powers are it's, gone. It's not tail workers without at least one dick joke. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's not. Te- well, I mean, yeah, but. I'm just I guess saying. it has our. <laughs> wait, wait. Does that mean it has our mushroom stamp of approval? <laughs> The I'm bar is now the DJ wow. over at the Strippers Guild. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, does that mean he, when he pees, it's two streams? Uh, but, uh, don't but cross the streams, man. Is, just one well really high up. Just, you know, the players can be creative. Sorry, or Dave. If you think the if the scenario uh, will uh, some hmm, if you think the scenario will fit how you describe it, sometimes that is enough to make the players happy. If that makes the players happy, I think I need new players. Um, well, Kai, is not kidnapping. Kai, oh, give it time. Would, would you like me to reread the question, or um, it's a three? It's a three beer Thursday. Oh yeah, just might be. How make crit, crit interesting? Correct. Hang on. Yeah, yeah, no L. Well, this is a, this is an ale horn. Impactful, exciting, uh, just some of the, the, the uh, and memorable. See previous statements, though. Before that, I kind of stole. Um, no, see previous statement of of if you make crit not I, I not not auto lethal and make it interesting, it's fun. I you know with the whole crit effects though. I also enjoy the idea of cribbing the hell out of um, of stealing a concept from Legend of the Five Rings about about before you make your I mean, be, before you make your check pretty much of hey do you want to do raises to make it more harder so that way you can get better effects or having people be able to spend off you know, like, there's look anything I do is cinematic. And it's really not exactly, you know, hey, you made a crit interesting. I already said how he made crits interesting in the previous answer, which was, hey, he did status effects. That's a, it makes it more memorable and more interesting rather than simply, congratulations, you ate, you ate four harpoons, die, I, I die. Um, because nobody, like, I, nobody wants to hear you're having a nice little day that a kitchen sink hits you in the face. For all the damage, all the damage, and that's not really interesting. Though it's really fun when you decide to go with, you know, Warhammer Fantasy, where you blow someone's arms off, and then you sit there and you try to see if you can recreate Monty Python and the Holy Grail sequence with a sniper rifle. Did you just made someone in the audience very happy. It's only oh, a I, wound. I mean, I, I mean, when you have players who are sitting here going, "Can I play baseball with someone's head with a crit?" I mean, that's kind of cool. Um, but really, honestly, critting isn't like critting is just that interesting thing that makes things happen. I really can't say anything like, Ooh. wow, I mean, it's, it's just simply, you know, in the pre, in the pre, in, in the earlier days, it was just simply you crit massive damage. And since everyone liked to build the, in, in older editions, the um, I'm playing the expanded crit range rapier. I rolled I rolled a thirteen. I rolled a confirm. I crit 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 crit, and you crit all day long. Um, yeah. After a while, it's just simply more damage, and that's all we're doing. It, I, I liked when they finally added, you know, cool effects, but that was it. I honestly, I don't really have anything more than I've already stated. Fair enough, man. So uh, I'm going to move on to the next uh, Baron question. This is, and and this is going to go actually, uh, wait. Okay, Bruce. uh, There he is. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to give everybody a chance to go first so they don't feel like, you know, they, they have to, you know, 
more or less, you know, get the last answer, which is probably, you know, their original answer was probably already taken. So I'm going to go with you, Jade. Um, and this question is, how can game masters and players balance the power and impact of critical hits in a way that feels fair and engaging for all par participants without making them too overpowered or too rare? And you are muted. Twice in a row. Man, that is a that is a mouthful. Um, how can game masters and players balance the? Well, okay. First off, see uh, see uh, gatekeepers uh, episode uh, dated eight twenty three on balance is a false god. Um, but uh, you know how how to make them. Uh, the power and the impact of critical hits in a way that feels engaging, uh, fair for all participants. Um, man, uh, you know, the, and, yeah, I'm gonna keep you know chiming on this this uh, gong, but you know, I I love status effects. Um, you know, and a lot of people are like, oh, status effects at like level twenty are are nothing. Like, oh, what's a <laughs> minus two? It's a minus fucking two, people. Like, you know, if, if I right? say a roll, yeah, if, if I say a roll is hard, that's a minus three to, to your roll. That, that's 15% chance of uh, additional failure, um, you know. So I, I'm going to keep bringing on that gong that's, you know, for status effects. And, you know, sometimes critical hits don't induce a status effect onto the monster. Sometimes a, a critical hit opens a monster up for your buddies instead. You know, you you know, you hit somebody upside the head with, um, you know, uh, and, and, and you know, this is more hypothetical and, and you know more about in game because you know I don't ever attack people in real life, obviously. Um, but if if your character hits somebody upside the head with a, a club, and you know rings their bell really you know hard enough, they're going to be dazed for a moment. They're going to be open to attacks from your allies. You know they're not going to have a chance to really defend themselves well. So you know what, nat twenty on a on a great club. I want to give everyone a you know a chance to hit them at uh, you know a a bonus to hit. You know they their their defense is lowered because they're dazed. Um, you know, but the same goes against the players. If if I've got a troll and I I'm swinging basically a a, a tree trunk. At, at my players and I can hit out to, to near distance so I can hit up to like 20 feet away with a, a tree, you know, and I, I swing left and take out, you know, three players with a critical hit, you know, they're all on the ground, they're dazed. And, you know, that's going to give my goblins an opportunity to go up and shank them. You know, my goblins might be one hit point mooks, but at the same time, if players are now easier to hit, my mooks are going to go in and sweep the floor with them. Um, you know, so as far as like making it fair, well, one, you be consistent in your rulings. Make a ruling and be consistent with it. Write it down, whatever the effect might be, um, or have it, you know, pre-written. You know, I I have a general idea of what weapons are capable of based on how they're used. If someone comes in with a great sword and decides to to hit people with the flat of the blade rather than the edge of the blade. Okay, one, that's doing bludgeoning damage, and two, you're not aiming to kill, you're aiming to bruise. Awesome. You know, you're, you're wanting to take them alive, so they're, they're going to start taking bruises and non-lethal hits. That You know, you're still reducing their their willingness to fight you. Um, so even if you critically hit with, you know, a, a blunted weapon, not trying to kill... You're you're gonna make it easier, you know, an easier time for yourself to, you know, convince them to give up and not want to fight you, um, you know. So take into account the weapons that are being used. You know, if if it's a monk and fisticuffs, you know, there are. I have learned through martial arts there are multiple things to, depending on the shape your hand takes at the moment of impact that do different things to the human body. So, you know, take into effect what the weapon is and how it's being employed. 
and come up with a, a method or a thing that that weapon is going to do to somebody, you know, when when it gets, you know, a power stroke in. Now, let's see, what does L say? Uh, Jade, who does more damage on a crit, a gnome with a 20 strength or an orc with a 20 strength? Um, depends on the game system. You know, if if you're running, uh, you know, D&D, you know, with, um, I think it was D&D, &D, uh, the orc with more strength would get the, the advantage. If you're running 3.5 or Pathfinder, it doesn't matter. It's equalized. Uh, I don't necessarily agree with that. I don't necessarily disagree with that. The different systems were written at you know by different people, with different rulings, and different you know methods of, of play. Um, you know, I don't really for my next game. I'm not going to have that problem really. Um, yeah, sure. I, I will have larger monsters who do more damage, but I'm I'm hitting a larger field of of players rather than you know hitting them just harder. Um, but it is something that I would say you could probably take into effect. A larger creature does more minimum damage than, you know, a, a medium or small creature does on a critical hit. This is where, you know, the concept of minimum damages for critical hits, because nobody likes rolling a one on a critical, um, even if it, the damage is doubled. OK, that's two. But if, you're, if your minimum damage, you know, is, you know, for let's say index card RPG, your minimum damage on a D6 weapon is three. And you happen to roll a two. OK, well, it just gets bumped up to a three. You're at minimum. And then you add the, the, D, the either the D12 or the special effect, uh, the, whatever the, that special effect might be for that weapon. Um, you know, so write down whatever it is you decide based on how the weapon is used and, and what weapon it is. And you know, keep it consistent, uh, and, and move forward with the game. Make the ruling, write it down, and then be fair about it, and have it go both ways. Uh, he wants to know, Jade, who does more damage on a critical a gnome with a twenty strength or an orc with a twenty strength? Yeah, I well, I, I kind of address that. You know, it's based on the game engine itself. Um, okay, so you know, I, you, I think for for. For uh, index card RPG, would you say gnomes are a smaller, smaller race than the orcs? Uh, the if you're doing a Tolkien-esque game. If I'm doing a Tolkien-esque game and have Tolkien-esque races, yeah, the the halflings are going to do probably less damage or less, you know, physical damage in strength uh, category than the orcs. Okay. So, elders, but at, at, there's... on this, on the same turn, though, most of my halflings would likely know that they are going to do less damage with strength than, you know, dex. So I would, I, they would likely be taking abilities to add their dexterity to the damage rather than their strength, and that they're looking for weak spots. Okay, um, Omanel has a question. He says, "Who has the best critical chart?" What game, I'm assuming he's asking, what game do you feel has the best critical role chart? And then he follows up, should each monster or weapon have its own critical chart? And this is really bringing me back into Sean Diamond's role master game, because everybody, you with, yeah, Kai, breathe it in. Breathe it in, Kai. Every weapon had its own set of criticals. You, you rolled a D6, I think. And each of the, the digits on the D6 would get you a different chart, depending on the mm -hmm. higher it is, the more severe the critical is. And basically, one of the, the, the six on the sixth tier, somewhere in the, like 70 plus on your critical roll, you would be like, you reduce your foe to the dust whence he came. And that's what Omen Owl just Blown reminded me of. So, I mean, if, if he's wanting to know about that, if he wants to play Chartmaster, uh, Rollmaster is really good. <laughs> Rollmaster second ed. Man, I I love holding my binder that I can use it, that I can roll my car on to and change, you know, change, you know. The tire? Under, yeah, with. Man. <laughs> Excuse me. I need to go to the index of my character sheet. <laughs> Boom. Okay. <laughs> If you think about it, that that is the way it should be. We just aren't capable of, you know, 
manipulating and managing that kind of information on our head. But every weapon in every situation should almost have its own, you know, crit rules. But, you know, we're not computers yet. Um, maybe when Neuralink I'm, comes I'm, in, we can just... I'm going to go ahead and you know, say it. Embrace the digital age. Put it onto a cloud server with you know, your own charts. Put it all out there on your own personal cloud server and reference it at the table if you need to. I mean, Just you saying. can run That's... a game with two laptops or with two two uh, VDUs. Yeah. I just don't... I, uh... I, Go ahead. I just don't like... I, I love having to scroll... like to scroll through my character sheet for a while to go find the right page of my character <laughs> sheet to write down everything and read everything and then cross reference the document yeah. on my tablet and it's really cool but i but i still don't want to ever go back to role master because it's a great Thank game you. but so no. I, i'm going to caveat off of 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 well off of that you know if you know, I'm I'm running index card RPG, so we don't actually add our stats to our our damage dice. Uh, we roll the the damage die plus the damage dice bonus. So if you have points in basic effort, and you roll a D4, you add those points to basic effort. You don't you're not actually adding your strength, dex, or con or anything like that to it. Um, however, in this instance of you know having said like okay well you know you you struck with a short sword so you stabbed them you know deeply and you know in, into and you pierced an organ and whatnot and it does a bleeding wound like an internal bleeding wound go ahead and write that on your 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 weapon uh you know tag that it, it does bleeding wounds on critical hits um you know especially if it's like the first time now i might even you know in index card rpg because a lot of it is diy for the game master like the game master comes up with whatever the hell they want really for their game and the players can assist too it's like hey wouldn't it be really cool if this did this and of course the gm goes oh yeah that would be really cool but i'm going to kind of tone it to this i'm going to you know to tweak it to that you know shape there instead you know so you know the player then says oh okay so the short sword my short sword you know i, I you know i've learned how to you know ram it in and aim for you know vital organs to do bleeding attack like internal bleeding awesome you know write that down on your character sheet okay so you know 10 you know 10 sessions later they've they've earned a mastery of some kind uh masteries when you roll uh, 20 natural 20s over the course of a campaign so they've they've rolled these 20 mat you know 20 nat 20s they get a mastery uh, to add to their character you know what i want to be a master at doing internal bleeding damage with my short sword Awesome. Good for you. Let's, you know, let's figure out a, a, an increase, some kind of thematic awesomeness for you and that short sword um, and work with your player on, you know, making and enhancing that critical effect of that weapon. Um, you know, and that's actually why I love index card RPG. And that's why I've made the switch pretty much entirely to index card RPGs, because it gives me the game master, the freedom to say, Hey, I really like what you're thinking. I like where this is going. I want you to, you know, I'm going to tweak this this way and make it just that much more awesome for you. Um, you know, and you don't have to worry about, you know, overpowering the enemies like ever. I, I never have to worry about that because, they can't. They can't just go, oh, yeah, I'm going to one shot that, you know, 20,000 heart dragon. No, you won't. You can try. I'll, I'll laugh, but, you know, and I'll have a good time with it, but you can try. So I think it's to Baron next. It most certainly is. Um, could someone, like, poke awake. him to wake him up? Nope, this him. Baron. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I'll just give him when a call. You write, when you write down everything for your damn campaign setting in one folder. <laughs> he is doing his version of Nemo in uh, Land of Slumber. If, if Land he's not, zonked, he's zonked. That's fine. He's allowed. Yeah. Uh, well, I you know, it was his question. Here. It was his question anyways. So, uh, No, Welcome come back. back. He's back. He's back. <laughs> Would you like to see you, sir? Question? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love how he's hey, so, like. So if I if I were to say it was the third question you wrote, that's not going to help, right? 
No. Maybe. Okay. It was the second question. Oh, you're right. It is the second question. Be um, throwing me completely off here. What the heck? Okay. No. <laughs> How can game masters and players balance the power and impacts of critical hits in a way that feels fair and engaging for all participants without making them feel too overpowered or too rare? Well, I mean, criticals should be celebrated, you know, because they don't always happen. Sometimes they can be, you can go several sessions and not see one at your table. Then you can go to several and through several sessions and see several of them back to back at your table. So, I mean, it, 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 a lot of times that's the way it winds up being either feast or famine with them. So, you know, all of those is to make and make sure that, you know, that if you're not having them explain how the critical is coming through, you start explaining how the critical comes through, you know, how, you know, the, the, the amazing, you know, workmen, you know, the, the showmanship of, you know, if they're using a sword or, or you know, a bow staff or, you know, even, even if they're using, you know, a, a dagger, you know, s celebrate how, how, you know, it's like, wow, you, Get that dagger right in between those two plates and slid it right into into his lung. Crap! It's like, how did you get that in there? Uh, you know, and yeah, you know, a lot of times it just the 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 criticals. I think shouldn't uh, really affect the balance. Criticals are are a tipping point. You catch someone off guard. You hit them just right. You get them actually to, you know, that, that sometimes that can be literally the killing blow. So, I mean, the, the, as far as I'm concerned, balance-wise, you can throw balance out when it comes to crits because they, they usually tip the scales. Even in, in a, in a real-life type fight, you know, hitting a critical area is going to tip the fight so yeah you know, they so i mean that that's kind of my two cents on it i mean the the balance uh isn't there but you know the issue the impact should definitely be felt and you know the uh the uh they should be overpowered because they are good. Okay. Um, what about the uh, the overpowered part? It's, I, I answered that. I said the, they should be. I said it should be overpowered because okay, they I are that rare. Right. Does that work both ways? Yeah, of course. Regardless, it, it needs to work both ways, you know. And like I said, you know, a lot of times it's going to be feast or famine. You know, sometimes I you're going to have. The, I, meant have the I meant for the monsters. Both ways, yeah. That that it, what's good for the goose is good for the gander, and I, I, you know, a I, lot I of times. I, I tend to agree. The reason I keep going on is, um, I know a lot of people, uh, not people that I know. But I know a lot of people are, you know, overly protective of their characters, let's just say, to be nice. And and maybe – go ahead, Kai. Oh, no, no, no. I wait for my turn. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I thought you wanted to bounce off of something I just said. Because yeah. uh, we, we've probably all been there where someone's reacted, you know, poorly to, you know, uh, the demise of, of their the beloved character. Oh, God. And – I, I, I'm I'm uh, teaching a new person to play who's never played before, and I'm uh, you know I'm not sure if they're still in the audience or not, but uh, you know it, it is a thing. You know, playing a character after you know six months, a year, you know, only to get one shotted, you know, out of nowhere, uh, can be quite quite the shock if you know if your first character or or you haven't been playing long or something like that. Um, 
because we never know who's watching uh, one of these videos. Uh, usually it's an old schooler, but on the off chance it's somebody new uh, or, or, you know, like somebody like Janet maybe, you know, who's, you know, maybe not as familiar with the concept as the rest of us are. I mean, how many hundreds of characters have we lost over the decades? I, I literally couldn't even tell you. My my first hack master dungeon master screen, which I used to take with me everywhere, I had fifty nine dead player character markers stapled onto it, and I only had that screen for about three years. I don't know if Kai and Garrett remember me bringing that to the game room or not. I remember it. It's a really cool notebook screen. It was a a thirty two panel GM screen, really helpful for ha for Hackmaster, and actually you could <laughs> use the the screen. It, it, yeah, it, you could use the screen to figure out your critical hit. It had a ten thousand point chart that you would use, and you'd roll a four die ten to figure out what it was. But depending on the size of the character. Like if you're attacking, if you're a huge creature attacking a human, you'd add 2,000 to the value of the die. So the higher you rolled, the more you rolled towards the head. It was pretty good, pretty good little system, but it was kind of clunky, like everything about fourth edition Hackmaster. Yeah, when so you get a new player that's kind of, you know, that's going to be emotional type player, there's nothing wrong with that. What you do is you spend some extra time with them to help them build his character, their character, something that they really enjoy. Then you and take their character and you get out your lighter or your matches and you set the son of a bitch on fire and tell him to do it again. Aww. Yeah, uh, at, the, at, at the gaming hall I used to work at back as a kid, um, if a player died, we would literally burn the sheet in the store. Um, and there were multiple times we had to hold the player down to get the sheet. Just saying. <laughs> when I was in college and we were learning how to cook something, just because I did it right the first time did not mean my instructor didn't make me do it over and over and over. Oh, this one's great. Do it again. Yep, as you should. So, uh, uh, Connell, it, it, same question. It, 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 it's totally oh. hide behind the, the pile of dead bards. How many do you have? 50. <laughs> what was the question? I'm sorry. We got, I got lost in the weeds. How can game masters and players balance the power and impact of critical hits in a way that feels fair and engaging for all participants without making them too overpowered or too rare? <laughs> well, let, I'm going to break this down, uh, the first part of it. Uh, there is no such thing as balance. Uh, those who try to find balance are normally hippies that don't eat meat, so they don't count. Um, second of all, now all jokes are there is no balance in this game. I mean, you get a group of people that make characters, and I don't, I mean, I can't speak for the older editions, but 3.5 up, you get a group of people together who's been playing the hobby for a long, long time. Their characters are all right, already already fucking to the max they know all the tricks they they know how to get every last number out of their character and to you know make it uh, make it benefit for themselves so you know that's balance out so it doesn't really matter what you throw at them uh the monster goes down when i decide to go down kind of theory uh, but to make it so balance is out the window I, I i don't believe i don't think you should like completely do a debit goes to Dallas on your players by throwing more monsters than they can freaking handle. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, trying to find a party with the perfect balance, it's rare, especially with Pathfinder 3.5. And so then how do you make them run away? Uh, you kill one of them badly. Actually, you don't need to, to kill them. Or you them, get a blue giant. Donald. Not blue giant. You get a blue dragon. A blue you dragon basically says... Them. You don't need to kill them. You just need to have a blue dragon tell them, give me all your magic shit. <laughs> yeah. Remember, that doesn't really go over well in the Paladin attacks. 
you let fly with the giant blue ball of ancient dragon energy and let that hover around the room frying the entire party that decided to be obstinate and difficult. And I'm going to be the main character. And then you let the half the party that decided to not opt for violence, let them go peaceably back out the way they came. I, I, I you know, L, I always like to leave people here uh, happy. So I, I'm sorry if that image on, of a choo-choo train does not make you happy. We, we do our best to be a family pleaser, and sometimes that family is a group of people who just hate you. <laughs> I was going to yeah. say the Manson family. Debbie, <laughs> Debbie goes to uh, uh, Daggerdale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, can, I, can I release my script for Manson family Christmas? <laughs> right. and the, second part, the second part is how to make it memorable. How do you make it memorable? Oh God, plenty of ways. <laughs> it just it depends. I know this is actually. I think the 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 word you're looking for is engaging. Engaging, uh, storytelling, the monster itself. All right, you know, let's play Power Rangers. What is going to be the monster of the week? Um, you Hold know. On. You know, use a monster that they never really see. I don't care if you're running a module or homebrew. If you got a monster that slightly fits, okay, has a little bit extra AC or HP than the normal one does, but they've never ran across it before, they're going to be talking about something they've never seen before more than they will talk about the the third time or fifth time they saw a troll. Yay, there's another troll. Great. Mm -hmm. Wait, but what was that thing that I'm had? I'm missing out on the most important part. Hmm. You could load a dungeon with the first five rooms where one's empty, the next one's full. The one's empty, the next one's full. When I mean full, you've got a single occupant in these rooms, and that would be a gas spore. Oh, God. Or All you've got to do is just put a couple of those in your dungeon, and the players will get it. They just need to leave. This is far <laughs> more than what they want to endure. Let the let let the one hireling think that he's doing a good job, and the gas spore sees him, and it gets close to him and explodes, and he comes back looking like the dude in RoboCop that gets hit by the the Caprice Classic in the factory uh, lot. Remember that? I do. <laughs> no, if you're gonna do that, you gotta throw the roper in there too. To hold no, 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 you just need like large, large army of fire giants. Are we? <laughs> The nothing room, beats room, no, uh, nothing beats a swarm of barguli. No, no, no. I, I like ropers and cloakers, and, and lurker above. That way, like everybody gets some snuggle time. <laughs> Wait, you got to do the cloaker dance though. Oh, got to do the cloaker dance. Hold on. Oh shit! Is this like the truffle shuffle? I was I just like thinking the, the same thing, Connor. Better. We can't see you. Uh, when can we ever? We should be it's blessed. Probably, it, it's probably better that way. After a while, the motor, the, the cloaker mating dance starts up, and that's what nobody wants to see. <laughs> you ever see two, uh, one? You ever see a pile of laundry lay on top of another pile of laundry? No, because I don't have rats. Don't forget, I think they also have cloacus. What's that uh, thing? Uh, freak, they dance too. They're, Sorry, uh, Kai, we will get to you. That's the end of my answer. Go ahead and get to Kai. <laughs> the you know, he might have trouble on out of here. Once we go down below 100 degrees, I started to sweat. I can't, I can't be on camera while butt crack is getting occupied by sweat beads. Sorry about that, Kai. Would you like Kai. me to repeat the question? Um, yeah, sure. <laughs> How can the game master and players balance the power and impact of critical hits in a way that feels engaging, fair for all participants without making them too overpowered or too rare? 
I'm going to go caveat off. Also, that I, I want to try and I want to see if it works. Just as I, as a GM, and I get to go, oh, that was a cool critical effect. Now here's that splash of cool, a cool detail and display that tells you how hard and how horrible it was. And then I'm going to go look at my players and go, now you describe how the crit hit you. And then have this wonderful little game of, oh, if, oh, if you, I, if you give me some really pussyfoot little um, slap on the wrist. Nothing really bad happens to you crits when I crit you. Well, guess what? When the crits start happening to my NPCs, I'm going to also pussyfoot and give little slaps I have no no effect. So, if you're like if you want me to give really hard hard hitting, butchering hard just meaty damages and cool explosions of, of gore, expect me to expect you to give me meaty details and horrible explosions. Of of gore and limbs and limbs being mauled. Otherwise, um, it's going to be a slap fight. So it, so if you want me to do something cool, you got to do something cool. So you got to take the hits as I take the hits. And I know a lot of players are like, but my character, I care about him. I like him. So that crit just gives him a small little de- little minor defect. And I'm going, you crit the ultimate boss, and he goes, ow. You have ruined my. I uh, you have ruined my cl- my cl- collectible gem. Uh, I gem bag on my belt. That was all. And have players go. That's not fair. You set. You set. You set the standard here, guys. If you want, if you want brutality, you gotta take brutality. And let the players set the gauge at where they're comfortable. That way, I can do it. Because trust me, I can go bloody as fuck. And. And live with the consequences. That's like sending a kid out to uh, pick his own switch. That's exactly what it is. But just remember, the switch you pick is all, is what I'm going to beat my uh, my villains with. Oh my god! I go back in this one. They're just going to send me back out if I pick that. That's right. My that's spine. right. So, that's right. Continue. Like remember, the punishment is equal to your effort. If you don't, if you don't want to get hurt, the bad guys get. I don't get hurt. So it's one of those nice little games of how nerfy do you want to play this? If you so want to I, play paint, play I, I paintball nerf wars, or go out there and, and scream fireball while you throw um, nerf, I throw tennis at each other. Um, that's what you're gonna get. But if you want to actually play brutality, well, guess what? Um, yeah, I. I'll be like, oh shit! You gave yourself a, like a, a, a second chest wound. Nature's way of telling you to slow down. Um, yeah, okay. Now I know where you're. Now I know where you're. Will, uh, I where, where you're willing to be. That's what it comes down to. Hypothetically, and, yeah. Hypothetically, let's say I'm in your campaign, and uh-huh. you say go out and pick your own switch. Okay, That's right. you're a wizard. I was uh-huh. I was kind of faced on your wizard and it shot me with a magic missile, but it got crit. Okay. Right. It blew okay. out the side of my face. This side of my face is no longer gone. It's just no longer there. Well, congratulations. You got a really cool, um, cool superficial but livable wound. Um, it's gonna be some cool. Now this tells me that you're willing to take that. Now you're willing that I'm willing to, to, to inflict that horrible um, level of brutality. So that tells me now everybody else is going to probably look at you like, what the fuck did you do, boy? <laughs> and because now that proves that you like, and I'll make a little note saying you're okay with Mortal Kombat levels of death and destruction. I'm okay with that. Meanwhile, everybody else, oh, we're not okay with that. You guys are whips. He'll get the cool shit. When he crits, he'll get cool shit. And, but you guys will get, uh, I will get nothing. That's what you should get. I, had them all go, oh, and I want to try that. See if the players are willing to beat themselves up to be able to inflict more damage. You call and that don't forget, game. you know, any any good face wound comes with a really cool mask. No and scars. And sc- hey, Go. fist scars was a thing Dick, back in Germany in the 20s. Hey, or losing a limb just means I get, you get to have the adventures of looking for a rep- for new uh, and for new mechanical body parts. 
Charlie. Nothing, nothing says we're going to play a game of uh, of of cyber psychosis more than <laughs> losing body parts in combat. Ray Auto Mail. <laughs> Let's play a game of slap. Yes. Box. <laughs> uh, auto, definitely auto mail. But remember, I I can easily import thanks to conversions. Anything from Cyberpunk or Shadowrun over to your uh, fantasy fun, uh, fun game. So yes, we will have cyber psychosis, and if we get to the point where we have it, have our fighter being able to have like a humanity of like what 0. 0.5, What happens? Okay. Well, this is what I'm hearing. Every other Tuesday, we're meeting over at Jade's house, and Kai's running. I mean, that's he keeps talking all this cool shit, and. <laughs> My liver, my spleen, my madula abundata. And L, I I do want my monster. I do, I do want cons- my monsters to great. Uh, I great my players, but my players have to show that they're willing to take it first. <laughs> yes, this is not D and D. This is Masochist R Us. By the, I, 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 I'm sorry. I have you not met before? <laughs> <laughs> nope, nope. I just need to know what kind of fuckery we're going to be about. That's all. Hey. I have. Hey, the fuckery level is it? The, the fuckery level is entirely on, in, in your hands. I can I could go to I I can go to eleven. I can go to Osmium if you want. But if you but if you want to play with I, I with Jello and Sydney Foam, well we can play it there. And I'll be like, ah, oh, everything's happy. You're all slapping each other like you're play like you're playing a LARP in the in, in the park. It's so much fun. Hey, 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 hey. I play some. Hey, hey, oh. hey. I've I done it too. I've done it too. <laughs> it hurts a little bit. There's some bruising. Hey, there, there's some twisted angles. You get to go home afterwards going, oh, did you really have to hit me with your foam stick that hard? Yeah. I should do better next time. Yeah. When Meanwhile, it's like. Two sake. Right here. <laughs> right, right here. Look. Yeah. I've nearly broken an ankle set to suck into a mole hole while some 300 pound monster and decides to run me over. So yeah, I know what this shit can do. Okay. <laughs> but I mean, but if, if like, if I create, like if, if you create, like if I create you and your, and your answer is, ow, I've got, I've got a black eye. I, I wins a little bit and I have a minus, like and I'll take a penalty to my, my ability to see in, in stereo vision for a little bit. And I'll be like, wow. That's kind of pathetic. That's kind of wimpy. All right, I create your, I create the boss of the, and your sword. Just you give him a super. Oh no, he can't see out of one eye because of a little bit of blood in his in his eyebrow. It's it. He's a he's kind of of uncomfortable due to the sting of blood in his eye. That that's it. Well, that's all I give. That's all you took. Oh yeah. I uh, I I gotta say that. Having a game set to eleven is liberating. It and is. Connell, Connell will tell you of the horror that I unleashed on Saturday. There was a fire giant standing on a ledge above a pit with oi tugs in it, and this is this spot in the big volcano where all the poop flows to, and these fire giants are there, just kind of on guard. Where guards, where guards are, and then one of the fire giants evaded a spell but the spell stayed at the location where it went and the spell is a group of chains that will immediately lock around a target and keep it held there (laughs) so one of the players kills the giant and the giant like i think it might have been connell but the giant dangles over the pit with the oitugs in it and connell had done like four or five arrows into it so he Hits it for over 70 points of damage of what's needed to be under its con. And I'm happy. So, anyway, I start to describe what happens next amidst the combat. I'm like, the people above, you start smelling something that doesn't smell too good. And one of the guys is like, what do I see? I'm like, well, you look over the edge and like everybody can see this if they take a look. But like poop is running out the plates of the, of the full plate. And it's dripping down into the pit with the oitugs. The oitugs are gathering around in a circle like it's some sort of festival where, like, there's a, a young, hot, nubile blonde with a gallon of milk. And she's just trying to chug it, but it's all at once. And so it's going down her chest. 
that same effect is going on with the oil tugs as the poop spills off the the plates and the, the blackened charcoal colored skin of the the fire giant it spills onto the floor as each of the oil tugs try to put their tentacles out and gather it up and put it in their greedy little mouths and they're having so much fun and they're like oh my god Nobody told us that fire giants tasted like this. Did you ever think they had so much iron and fiber? Oh, my. And so, like, the fire giants start, like, you know, getting panicked. And then the players start winning, of course, because that is just an encounter. It's nothing big. It's just a, a crappy little same level encounter, blah, 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 blah. There's, like, seven players. There's, like, three fire giants. And they all, before it's all over with, I make sure to make myself almost nauseous if describing this. Because a critical hit should be a critical hit. And not yeah. every and, and and sometimes whenever you're narrating the combat, it's okay to get a little graphic and gory if it's your audience that you're playing to. And I'm trying yeah. to play it myself. What do I want? So I'm trying to go aristocrats level uh, vomitorium, okay? I want people puking on each other's faces as I describe all the poop sliding around down to the ground and the oitugs are there tripping over each other, putting their big stompy feet down and trying to get in good position. And another Oitug is there with his large tongue trying to catch all the poop dribble off of one of the fire giants. And I I think my players, like, I had, like, two of them at, that were present, and they were both, like, you know, putting their mouth, putting their face, their fist over their mouth, like, trying not to vomit there. Go ahead and go to 11, guys. When you're describing your combats, and even if it's a critical hit or not, if it reduces somebody to where they're out of the game, get a little graphic with it. Make it to oh, where yeah. medic, make it to where a medic watching this or listening to this would go, "Oh God, that is a pretty traumatic hit." You know, make make oh, yeah. them wins. You know, I'm scared. I'm not that I'm scared. Scared. I'm just. I'm worried with less thing. Baron heard before he nods off again is Bruce uh, talking about his shit uh, shit monster. So I could just see Baron and Baron's dream being run down the hall by from the shit monster from Dogma. No, <laughs> it, it would it would be uh, it would be chasing me straight into a GQ because that's the asshole Bruce is. <laughs> <laughs> that, is, that is my level of asshole. Oh, look, we have to reduce you to your basic component parts. So I might drink them. I I had to watch Dogma after that that game that night. It's just, I... <laughs> All right. You're welcome. All right. Well, last, 20, last 10 minutes we're talking about Bruce and his marvelous ship monsters. Uh, I think we answered all the questions. Is there any more? I, 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 I want to add something here, if I, if I may. <laughs> I don't think that we need Faraday in games. You guys had a really good stream on Gatekeepers last night, and I want to congratulate Jade and uh, the, the participants of that for, for putting on a good stream. I was laughing the whole time, and I was enjoying the fact that I was hearing something finally from my peers that I want to hear where they're saying, I don't want to make a fair game. No. I want to make... I want to have there's no such thing. There's literally no such fun. thing. There's no such thing. And 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 whenever we bring in critical hits to it, like we get people that are scared, like, oh my god, we're gonna have people leave our tables because we did too much damage to them. Let I... them fucking leave. Let them go. Nope. Because they have this. <laughs> Kai, it's these fingers. It's these fingers, Kai. It's these fingers. <laughs> no, I you have never crit well critical hits will happen. Let Kai finish. Yep, Kai. Nope. I have never had a player leave from a from critical hits. I never have. In fact, I have had one. I've had a couple players just go, "Holy," because you know I've had players who have pulled the "please stop counting" um, rule out, where we've had to go on the "he's dead, stop counting," but the crit stop counting. What? Like, look, you're somewhere in the in the nineties to hundreds, and the guy had twelve left. He's dead. No, I must find out. No. <laughs> but then again, I have also done the exact same thing to a player. And the whole table is like, oh, fuck. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm almost dead. And I'm like, 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 look, I knew I'm dying here. I got one-on-one -on -one with, with one of the major end bosses for a campaign arc before we're supposed to fight them. And I'm soloing him. 
like, yeah, you can't, you can't win. He goes, no, I knew I couldn't win. And so the graphic detail of him being just, yes, just sliced, in, you know, almost sliced in half and then kicked off the flying pterosaur, you know, that was, you know, the giant flying pterosaur and the description of the body falling in parts and then hitting the ground with a horrible, with a horrible sickening splat. He goes, I earned that death. I'm so happy. And people are like, can we get to it? Like, no, no. He by the by the point that it went airborne to the point where the sword happened, he's a good half mile away. The his body is on the ground. He goes, we are bringing him back. He goes, no, no, no. I want to die. This was the this death is a worthy one. I I, I earned this crit, and I'm like, yes, you did. And I have like, and I like the. Or I had one player who walked into a room and tried to do the Hans, you know, the Han Solo chase some guards in there, and literally just got turned into hamburger. He goes, no, no, I earned that one. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, you earned it. You, you were dumb. You chased the guards into a, into the barracks, and then they just literally turned around and opened up with stems. Just stems, uh, just stend you down. And it was just like, it was like a bad 80s anime of just ultra violence, just bullets, gore, horrible corpse hitting the ground. And I'm like, I never had a player go, but, 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 no. I, I only had one player get hit by, like, the best spell and, like, stacked up all the effects and, like, evaporated him. Like, just, boom, dust. And he was like, no, no, that's cool. I'm good with that. I most players, because they choose, like, I, unless you literally go, I go outside for my morning newspaper while drinking my coffee in a bathrobe, and then you put a pity cow to their forehead. I had done that as a player. Most players are like, I don't really mind dying because, like, when you walk into combat, it's a brutal, it's a brutality. If they're rolling dice and they're and they're like sort of sharp this time, limbs coming off, I'm like, or you know, impaling for uh, impaling for massive bleed damage. They're gutting people and they're leaving organs everywhere. It's just messy as fuck, you know. One player who goes, I hate that wizard, and literally loads a 75 millimeter shell and goes, Target, I see that wizard. I see him. I don't want to see him anymore. I can do that. Boom. And then watch that shell go screaming down there and the wizard exploding due to um, due to taking a nice 10d6 of, of armor piercing damage and explosion effects. And then watching him go, Eat that. Like, like, ha, mankind figured out how to do fireball without magic, motherfucker. Reload. Thump. We're ready for round two. And they're like, that's the kind of shit that my players are like, yeah, yeah. If if we go into this and we go, yeah, there's a guy out there with a big giant cannon. We're gonna like someone's gonna die out here, or they get turned into pin cushions. It's the end of hero. You know, the outline of where the PC was once standing in the doorway. It, that shit happens. And you know, I never had a player go, oh man, there's too many crits because they do it too. It's okay. All right. Well, I, I think we crit the hell out of this horse. Yeah, uh, considering we still had a few more questions, I I, I, I feel we've uh, we've turned this into a fine paste and then uh, scattered it to four winds. We critted it! <laughs> Indeed. Yes! That's okay, because next week we look at the flip side. Flip the script. No. We're going to no. look at fumbles. That should be uh, one of our funniest episodes yet, I think, folks. Oh, yes. oh yes. I'll, yes. I'll bring props. I'll bring props. Whoa. <laughs> if you don't leave bring a rubber wife, stick in, there's nothing wrong with you, Bruce. Leave no, 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 your wife's toys uh, in the bedroom. I'm, I'm going to bring the cards out from the living room. Oh. Zika. Yeah, Jade has Zika. his too. I, I, um, oh. I gotta ask. Shadow, been seeing a lot of content from you lately. Makes me pretty happy. You're getting up Thanks, there, in subscribers. Um, working on it. What are you doing with Arduin in the next week? Because that's a question I'll be asking you more frequently. Because you're one of the leading voices of Arduin. 
And whenever I talk with other people, like they'll they'll mention you or they give you give the description for Shadow. Like he really loves Arduin. Did you know that? Yeah, I do. But you ought to talk to him about uh, the Nine Princes and Amber while you're at it. But they'll they'll be then afterwards if they know you for any like more than five minutes, they're like, oh my god, he knew that dude in real life. And it's yeah. it's kind of cool because it, it was he was taken from us. Both of them, uh, David A. Hargrave and Roger Zelazny, both left this earth way too young. And, you know, uh, like the old song, you know, uh, they must have been pretty damn good. Uh, and I can attest at least one of them was was a uh, a true prince. The uh, the other one, I, I, I missed out on the opportunity because I was a wee lad and uh, unable to take the two-hour bus ride, three-hour bus ride to to Frisco to meet him in person, which if I had a time machine would be probably the the first person I'd go and visit. Um, there's not really a lot. I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can pick up for Arduin uh, from Emperor's Choice Games. Uh, they've got uh, just a crap ton of old stuff, but they are all right now asses and elbows working on the new version that will be a culmination of decades of work. You know, most role-playing games when they come out, They've got like, you know, two, three years of, you know, work and play testing. This game, they've been working on it for for the better part of two decades. And my son and I have been, you know, blessed to be able to help them in, in the little way that we've been able to. Uh, and, and hopefully I'll, I'll be able to, you know, uh, bring George and Dave from Emperor's Choice uh, back onto the stream. If you haven't seen one of our videos with them, they can tell you, you know, all, all more than I can tell you uh, because of you know NDAs uh, about what's coming up, but uh, I think everybody here will find something about it that they can like or appreciate. If not, you know, just go cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs uh, over it. it. It has so many unique takes on literally everything. That's why you know um, I wanted to you know take the helm of this show because every critical rule out there was inspired, you know, uh, by the man himself, David A. Hargrave. And believe it or not, there's so many other rules that also probably originated in Arduin, and I'm not going to go on about that. Instead, I'm going to see what the rest of you guys got going on this week. Kai, you got anything for us coming up in the near future? Saturday with Bruce. Volume 5. Can you elaborate for our new... new I have no idea what I'm going to talk about. It's just going to be oh, a no, no, I, meant, I, I meant the name of the show, where oh, they can find it. Oh, it'll be Kai's Musings, Volume 5. It'll be on Bruce's channel. Okay. It just is, in case there might be somebody new to the, the, the broadcast. It'll be on Kai's channel, too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we, we try to you, Bruce? Stream, Kai, because... I, I want your channel to grow. I find your Indeed. rant fucking hilarious. And I I want you to be able to just gather an audience. Like, you have a lot of friends. You have a lot of people that watch you. And they think, like, I love St. Ran of Kai. He is so amazing. I have, the thing is, I'm sorry I've been quiet this last week. I've been beating my head against a desk on a project quietly that's nowhere near ready to be put out in the wild. But, yeah, so I've been kind of working on that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Because Bruce, what about you, man? Um, aside from tomorrow night's shit show with Janet on the channel, Janet from Another Planet, uh, we'll be doing a stream on Saturday from here about Chris's campaign. And uh, that'll be, uh, have to set up a new playlist for that. Then Sunday, I think I'm taking that day off camera, and I'm going to go see a cousin of mine because he just moved up to San Antonio, and I didn't realize it, so like, well, oh, shit. Uh, Monday, Janet and I, or Sunday night, Janet and I will be watching A Bronx Tale, although I don't know what time, but really? Monday, the review for A Bronx Tale will be coming down, and uh, if you like A Bronx Tale, then please come watch me and Janet on my channel, that's Bruce Lombardo. Anyway. Uh, Dick Division. 
Yeah, you know, Dick's division. It'll it'll get you. You you just type in Bruce Lombardo uh, seventy five, and it'll get you to the YouTube site. But yeah. I I do appreciate people that are are joining. It seems like our numbers are going up a little bit. I don't know if that's because people want to see hot takes or if they're actually enjoying the content. I hope I hope it's the latter, not so much the former. How about you, Jay? What do you got for us? Yeah. So. Um... As some of you may know, some of you may not know. Um, I'm Jade uh, from Jade's Tabletop Tavern, and I run the Gatekeeper's show on my channel, mostly. But you can also just check it out on Shadow's channel or even Connell's Shadow, or Connell's, wow, if I can speak right now. I'm two you beers in for the night. Um, if I Drink can, another you know, one. You can also catch it on Connell's uh, channel at times. Um, so what we talk about in uh, Gatekeeper's is, well... Gaming topics, uh, specifically anytime someone asks a question uh, to gatekeepers, um, you know, if it's content that we believe we could, you know, talk about for two hours and expand upon the the various details or nuances of, uh, we generally take it up as a topic. Um, so this past week was balance is a false god and you can check it out on my channel as far as next week uh i don't know what the, the topic's gonna be yet but uh hopefully it's a it's gonna be a good one i hear a dog not mine yeah that's mine. that's a rocky that's a rocky yeah so uh baron what do you got for us anything new well i i received something in the mail that i'm going to be looking at which is the 40th 40th anniversary of Harn World. Got all kinds of, of nifty things along with a Kingdom of Azimir. Sweet. So uh, I'm going to be looking these over, maybe doing a review video or two uh, before I send them off to the next person. Yes, we. this is a traveling copy. I will not be keeping this. So, but uh, yeah, definitely uh, going to be interesting to to look through these and to uh, to see what's in them. You know, our, our good friend Squirrel Hermit—that's his favorite thing—and he keeps oh, recommending yeah, I know. it to me. Um, uh, he was supposed to do something today, and uh, things got in the way. I don't know if I missed it. I'm going to have to go check right after I'm here. But I, I you know, I've known about Harn World since all the way back in the day of Dragon Magazine, and it's one of the few systems I've just never been able to check out. So I'm going to have to I'm gonna have to have look into that. Maybe I can find a, 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 some sort of quick start PDF type of thing on the, on the high seas, as it were, uh, before I, you know, drop some cold hard cash on it. They have a quick start. Run. Yeah, they have a quick start. Also, they, they sent me, I can send you a copy of what they sent me when I did my interview with Grant and everything else, which is which has a lot of info in it. Yeah, because I, you know, I, I never missed a, a Hermit video. And, you know, when a guy like that, you know, is, is that enthusiastic about something, you know it's got to be good. Um, Harn is a fantastic world. It is set at low magic, so most like second ed D and D, first edition D and D would fit pretty well within it. Um, third edition D and D, not really so much. They they cranked up the magic, they cranked up the the awe and thunder phase of of the game a lot more. So Harn World is fantastic for low magic. If you want to run Warhammer FRP in that, you very well could. They've got a very cool lore setup. The the dwarves are not friendly at all, and they're they they are very much indifferent to the needs of heroes and bandits. Uh, it, it's it's a very good system, Shadow. I I would I would recommend the world for Harn to be used at any game table for any system. And what I've what I've been reading through and everything else on Harn, it yeah, I I, I to be honest, I think you would uh, really it would really you'd really enjoy it. Yeah, 
Connell, what do you got coming up this this yeah, weekend? Sorry. I, I just, uh, uh, this weekend is I need to get rest of a hold of the rest of the people, but this weekend is going to be a wash for me. I got like, two birthdays firing off this weekend that I just can't get away from. One being my brother's, and the other one is another family member. So I got basically nothing going on this weekend. Uh, via uh, so no so no faculty, no faculty this weekend. It okay. just that uh, birthdays happen, you know, not you know, I can't get away from the explosion. Um, I'm thinking about I might do a little bit of tidbit. I know they were talking about doing the Irish Festival here in Peoria. If you get a chance, you should freaking go if you're local. If not, talk to your town, have your own Irish Festival. I think every major town, city, and so forth should have one. There's enough of us bastards out there, we should make it a thing. Um, yeah, they have, they're going to have red hot chili pipers down there too. I heard, I heard, I heard. Um, I, I'm, I'm going to have to try to figure a way to make that work. Uh, me and Justin and Bo have talked about making, started doing videos where we're reviewing Skyrim uh, videos. Um, Wait, soon. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that, Connell? I've been told I don't produce enough contacts, uh, content, so I'm upping my game. No, okay. <laughs> uh, so we'll be doing that um, here soon, sometime at the end of September. Um, anything else really else going on? Uh, September is my birthday month, so as soon as we get done with our last video... We're doing guilty pleasure movies. The movies that we don't want to own up to liking uh, is going to be the theme of September. I'm sure uh, me, Shadow, Bo, Omenow, uh, People don't like Mark, and Jack will have some interesting picks if Jack does have a pick for this coming month. Jack just started school, so I know he's going to be a very busy, active proper citizen of these United States as his uncle is a fuck up. Uh, that's what I got going on. But not controlling. Oh. Not over controlling fuck up. That's his dad. Okay. Yeah. Um, oh, oh. Hold on. Hold on. We haven't done this tonight. Ah, oh, there we go. Uh. So I want to thank everybody. He's for, all like, he was like, for oh, along. I'm going to behave you on stream. Great. Uh, I, I know this topic wasn't, uh, 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 you know, uh, up everybody's alley per se, but you guys all did a great job. And, uh, you know, anytime I get to talk about uh, two of my favorite people who are no longer with us, it's, you know, it, it's aces with my, in my book. So uh, I want everybody to have a great week and an even better, you know, weekend. Uh, the weather's starting to change for some folks. Uh, for most of you guys in the panel, it's turning to suck. I'm sorry to hear that. But, uh, you know, as, as our worry. good friend Rick says, be it's only going to get better. I know, It'll right? It'll be cold soon. Not soon enough. I know. Yes, give me my hoodie weather. I want icebergs Please. rolling down the highway. That's what I want. All right, everybody. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, we, we definitely uh, have appreciated everyone that's been here. Thank you for, for the, the big trade that we did have. Thank you, all the regulars, all the new people. We definitely appreciate you taking a little bit of time to listen to something we love to talk about, tabletop games. We will see you next week. Thank you, everybody, for being with us tonight. God bless.